Today I'll show you how to conserve bacteria in the freezer for many months. So what you need is glycerol, then a Bunsen burner to keep the area where you work free of germs, a lighter to light it up, then a variable pipette which is not absolutely necessary. You can just pour the solutions in the aseptic Eppendorf tubes which you'll need and if you want sterile tips for the pipette then an inoculation loop this one is homemade and a marker to label the Eppendorf tubes later then a centrifuge is not absolutely necessary but it's useful to you know purify the bacteria later as safety equipment I use some lab goggles gloves of course and those fabric masks of course you need a source of bacteria and in my case it's a agar plate in the incubator with some bacillus subtilis cultures on it so it has been in the in the incubator for two days at 30 degrees celsius now this is a labeled agar plate from the incubator and you can see all the colonies right there on the plate after two days. Now put around 100 microliters of the aseptic sodium chloride solution in an Eppendorf tube. Now this is my aseptic Eppendorf tube and I put around 100 microliters in it. It doesn't have to be exact. Now light up the Bunsen burner and keep it near your place where you work with the bacteria. First of all you have to yeah, let your nucleation loop glow and to make it free of bacteria. I'll take some bacteria out of the agar plate. Now try to get your bacteria in the Eppendorf tube with the sodium chloride solution. This needs a bit of practice but you can wait a bit to let them dissolve in the solution and then that should be done. Now this step is not absolutely necessary but if you want you can put your solution with the bacteria in a centrifuge and centrifuge it for around 5 seconds at 6000 rpm and now you should have a nice pellet and now you can put bacteria from your agar plate again in the same test in the same Eppendorf tube and centrifuge it again and again and again and um, by doing this a few times you get more bacteria so it's purified but um, after three times you should have enough bacteria in your Eppendorf tube now I labeled the Eppendorf tube with Bacillus subtilis and I will invert it a few times to get rid of the pellet and to now put the glycerol in it now put a aseptic pipette tip on your pipette and fill the tube up with glycerol. Now what we have now is a mixture of glycerol, sodium chloride solution and bacteria in our Eppendorf tube and 
we don't want we want to have a well mixed mixture and that's why you have to invert it a few times now I'm gonna explain what happens so we have our bacteria and if we would just put them in the freezer at minus 30 degrees Celsius the water in the bacteria so there's water inside here H2O um, they would they would die because the water would freeze and form those spiky crystals and that would destroy the cell wall of the bacteria so that's not good and that's why we use glycerol and glycerol helps to prevent the effect of building water crystals then we have sodium chloride and we use sodium chloride because of the um, concentration gradient between bacteria and the medium so the problem is if you just used distilled water H2O they would lice and um, kind of explode because there's salt in the bacteria and um, the water would just go into the bacteria to you know to lower the concentration gradient and so all the water would go in the bacteria and they would just blow up that's why you use 0.9 percent of sodium chloride which helps to prevent that effect so now we have about the same concentration of minerals outside and inside the bacteria the last step is to put your bacteria in a freezer it's important that you use a freezer that goes down to minus 30 degrees celsius so I've got a nice little beaker, a label bacteria beaker in that freezer so that nobody thinks that it's just rubbish and throws it away or something um, yeah, I know it's not very professional with all those things to eat inside but um, it's nicely closed and safe so I don't think that anything bad will happen.